Okay, welcome back. Last week we talked about the principles of perspective and introduced the main concepts such as the eye line, horizon line, vanishing points, and so forth. And we also introduced one point, two point, and three point perspective. But we introduced ourselves to those concepts in a very informal manner using analogies and such. This time we're going to be talking about formal linear perspective. Things like station points and picture planes. And I'll introduce you to the formal linear perspective setup. Then we'll look at some diagrams and define all these concepts. And you may not understand this all immediately, nor do I expect you to. But just trust me for now, and when we go through the exercises and techniques in later videos, you'll start understanding what these concepts mean and the purpose of them all much better. So here we are, the formal perspective setup. Let's take a closer look at it. We'll start with a concept that's already pretty familiar to us, the eye line slash eye level. It's the horizontal line crossing through the middle of our vision as if we were emitting an invisible beam going on forever left and right from the center of our eyes. And this eye level in traditional one and two point is set to whatever height our eyes are up from the ground plane. For example, if you were six feet tall looking straight out onto the horizon, your eye level would be approximately five foot eight, give or take, depending on the length from the top of your head to the center of your eye. Alternatively, if you were to take a knee, then your eye level would drop about a foot and a half or so. Again, that's traditional one and two point, where we're either looking left and right or moving up and down parallel to the ground plane. When we get into formal three point perspective, we'll start measuring the tilt of the viewer relative to the ground plane. But that's for a future video. Next, our center of vision or CV line is the imaginary line that goes vertically through the center of our vision. Simple as that. And if you remember from our first video, where this line intersects with the eye line is going to mark our one point vanishing point, which is also the center of our vision point. And now moving on, let's discuss the picture plane or PP for short. The picture plane basically is the concept of a flat 2D plane between the viewer and the world they observe, always parallel to the angle of our head. In other words, if we were to tilt our heads down, the picture plane would follow us, always remaining perfectly parallel to the angle of our faces. You can consider this plane basically as your frame or the sheet of paper on which you draw a perspective drawing. To clarify further, let's look at this diagram from Wikipedia. In the center is our picture plane, beyond it our subject, and the point where all the lines are converging to is our viewer or station point, which I'll explain later. Look at the lines projecting out from the viewer through the flat plane to the corners of the box. If we connect the points at which the projections cross through the 2D plane, we create an image with the illusion of 3D space. We've drawn how that 3D space appears in reality on a two-dimensional surface, almost as if it were simply a sheet of glass between us and the box. But it's not reality. It's a drawing of reality, a perspective drawing. I like to remember this concept by thinking of that old Looney Tunes gag, the one where Roadrunner paints up the side of a building at the end of a road to make it look as if the road goes on forever, and then a coyote slams into it full speed. That's the essence of what we're doing here. If you don't quite get it, try this exercise. Take a window in your house and cover it with a large sheet of tracing paper. Plunk yourself down in front of it and trace everything you see. If you've done this correctly, you can shut the window now, and sitting in the same position from which you drew, you'll see everything just as it was when the window was open, as if your tracing paper were the window itself. Next, let's discuss the station point. Put simply, it's the position from the center of our vision on the picture plane to the point between our eyes. In formal linear perspective, we draw the station point as a vertical line straight down from the center of vision point. This line is a flattened out representation of our distance to the picture plane. We do this because we can't exactly draw our viewpoint coming out of the page. One, it wouldn't have any perspective to it being that it's a perfectly straight line coming out towards us from the center of vision, and two, it would get in the way. 
So in this way, our eye level tells us the height at which we are viewing our subject, and the station point tells us the distance we are from the picture plane, as shown in the diagram here. The viewer is standing 8 feet away from the picture plane with an eye level height of 6 feet. This gives us the perspective view in the next image, being an 8 foot line down from the center of our vision. And obviously we're not going to put down an 8 foot line, we're going to do a scale drawing. Finally, there's the cone of vision. It is drawn by projecting a real 30 degree angle to the left and right of the SP for a total of 60 degrees. Its purpose is to be analogous to our own field of vision and mark a space in which objects appear and behave as we see them with our own eyes. The closer we are to the picture plane, aka the shorter distance of our station point, the less subjects will be able to fit inside our cone of vision and also they'll appear larger. The farther we are from the picture plane, the more we'll be able to fit inside the cone but they'll appear smaller. Outside of this cone, space appears to distort. We get perfect cubes that appear to be long rectangles and such. We don't get to see this space in real life because as we move our eyes to view this distorted space, we bring along with us our eye line and center of vision and so forth, so that now the once distorted space is within our field of view and has been re-imaged and reprocessed by our brains to appear normal. And this is partly why perspective drawing is so incredible, is that we can frame our composition such that the cone of vision is extremely small relative to the entire area of our image, and thus view all that weird distorted space. Furthermore, we can compose our images so that the eye line, center of vision, station point, and so forth aren't even in the frame. They're off in the distance. We'll still measure from them, but the audience will never see them. All they'll see is our cool, weird, distorted version of reality. In real life, through our own eyes or in a medium like film and photography, we can never divorce ourselves from our perspective setup, i.e. eye line, center vision, station point, etc. From the second we are born until the second we die, these things are with us like headgear or if you play video games, a heads up display. But with a drawing, we can put our frame anywhere. So knowing about the cone of vision, knowing where distortion happens, and being able to understand and control these things gives us an incredible amount of freedom to compose pictures with. Lastly, let's talk about measuring lines. We can use measuring lines at any depth so long as you keep scale consistent within your image by referencing off the first established measuring line. But it's a lot easier to start with a ground measuring line that is flush with your picture plane and that way you can use the same increments on your ground line to measure your station point distance. Otherwise, you'd have to work backwards, which probably would be pretty difficult for a student. We can use these true height and width increments we've established here to reference scale at any depth in our picture plane. A foot here is a foot there, so to speak. I won't go too deep on this concept because it'll have its own videos concerning formal measuring of depth using measuring lines. All you need to know for now is that we can use real measured increments with our rulers and other tools to reference scale and perspective. And now let's pull back and put all the pieces together. We've got our figure here who is also the station point which we've represented two dimensionally by simply transferring that distance down onto the picture plane as you would with two points of a compass or a piece of twine and a pencil. We've got our 60 degree projection coming out of the viewer slash station point, intersecting with the picture plane, making the borders of our cone of vision indicating where space behaves normally. We've got the eye level going on forever left and right at the height of the viewer's eyes. On the center of vision line, we've got a true height line telling us both the distance from the station point and the distance from the ground plane to the eye level. And along the point at which the picture plane intersects with the ground plane, we've got a ground measuring line using the same increments as the height line, which we can use to establish scale at the point of the picture plane, and then reference objects further back from those measurements. And that's about it for explaining slash defining these concepts of formal perspective. To wrap things up, I just want to say that while in this video I've covered some very formal concepts, 
I don't want you to misunderstand that you'll have to use every concept and draw out this complete formal perspective setup every time you do a perspective drawing. There are some very important lessons here, but I don't want them to encumber you. I'm teaching you the formal so that you can be more informed when you do the informal. Sorry for that mouthful smoothie, and I'll apologize again preemptively for repeating myself, but if you don't grasp this all just yet, don't worry, stick with me. Once we start getting into further lessons, which are all going to be about applying perspective techniques, you'll start picking up on those things. So, if you stuck with me thus far, thank you. I know these first two lessons have been pretty dry and theory-filled, but I hope some of you find these concepts as interesting as I do. From here on though, it's all going to be smooth sailing. Just quick, step-by-step -step perspective techniques that you can apply to your drawings that's really going to improve their realism. Hope to see you again.